Hi, I'm JG Barnes and welcome back to The Table Read. Welcome back to The Table Read. Again, I have to apologise that I have lost my voice. If you can't hear me, I swear I'm trying. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try and speak as loudly and clearly as I can, but I am struggling a bit today. So today I'm going to be answering a question I got from Harim Nafiz who asked how to write a vampire story. Now this is something I'm really excited to talk about because I love vampire stories. I am a big fan of vampires. Um, just the whole concept of it, it's always appealed to me. I think starting with Buffy the Vampire Slayer when I was a teenager, which just going from there. So this is a really cool subject for me to talk about. The first thing you have to think about when you're writing a vampire story is what kind of monster are you dealing with here? Because there's different kinds. Are you having this sort of moody and sort of sexy style vampire? I'm talking Edward Cullen, I'm talking Angel, the, you know, the moody goth guy one. Now, if you want to laugh about me saying sexy, I don't mind if you do not find either of those characters sexy, that is what they are designed to be, okay? So, that is one kind. Then you have the more monstrous vampire. This is the sort of Nosferatu character. This is the one which is like, yeah, sort of really scary looking. Or you have a classic vampire, you have Dracula. This is the, you know, the sort of cape and the big castle. These are all different kinds of vampires and they appear in different stories. The sexy moody vampires, that's, yeah, Buffy, it's Twilight, it's Interview with the Vampire, it's Lost Boys. And I think that's the more common and popular vampire style right now. Um, because people find vampires sexy and cool and it's fun to sort of have the wild sexy vampire man. It, it's true blood. Again, it's it's using that as a way of having a dangerous monster passion love affair situation. The scary scary vampire, the monstrous, the, the creepy scary one, that's great if you're doing a real horror story, not a like a rum con murder story like the other ones, but a monster story. If you are writing a monstrous vampire, then that's also great. And if you want to do the classic vampire, again, you can tell a great story with that, but I think that's kind of gone out of style a little bit. It was played with in Interview with the Vampire, but they kind of, they don't really go that way. It stays mostly with the trendy, sexy vampire. The next thing you have to work out, what's the law here? What is the vampire situation? For instance, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, when he has no soul, is pure monster. But Spike uh, goes on a quest for a soul because he's not a pure monster. So how much control over this instinct to eat people do they have? If they can decide whether or not to kill them and eat them, like Spike opts out. Yeah, he gets a chip in his head that sends him on that path, but when he goes looking for his soul, that's a choice he makes even though he hasn't got one. He's making a choice to be good. Which means you then have the moral complexity of is it fair to kill them? In Unholy Water, the book by Jonathan McKinney, the vampire, he's not soulless. He's driven with a desperate desire to eat blood. Like, it is overpowering. It's not that he's necessarily an evil person choosing to be evil. He's driven so desperately by the need to consume blood that it just overrides everything else. So to work out, what is it? What makes them kill people? Is it that they are soulless monsters? Is it they are driven to consume blood? Or is it something else? In Twilight, they just choose not to some of them, you know? And then what about the law of the sunlight? What can kill them? In, as I say, in Twilight, daylight doesn't kill them. In Interview with the Vampire, daylight definitely can. In Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it can. Like, it does kill them. But they also can run around with coats over their heads, or, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like just the light around them. It has to be direct sunlight. So. What is it? Because you need to be really clear, these are all things that you have to take into account. 
then are you gonna be telling a love story is this girl human falls in love with man vampire because if you're gonna do that you have to be aware that it's a bit of a trope and it's kind of gone out of popularity it was so overdone by the twilight and the buffy era of vampires that if you want to do the teenage girl falls in love with a male vampire you're gonna have to do something new and creative because it's it's a there's always going to be an audience for it and I'm not against writing tropes but it's been done a lot and you have to be genre aware and you can't just repeat the same story that's been done before because it's it lacks imagination so you can't do it but you have to be careful you have to take it into a new territory either turn it up and make it boy falls in love with girl vampire you can do that or two vampires fall in love with each other and one like doesn't want to kill people and one doesn't, like, it, it doesn't matter but if you're telling a vampire love story you have to be conscious of the very famous vampire stories that have come before then think about how are they killed as i say sunlight can affect them in different ways but are there people who are capable of killing them are you having a vampire slayer situation again it's fine if you are i wouldn't necessarily call a buffy the vampire slayer but you might have people who are aware of vampires and go out to fight them or are they coexisting in secret and trying not to cause a problem trying not to get killed trying not to disturb are there old creatures that live amongst us and are just different like the collins these are all things you have to take into account. Basically, it's world building and it's backstory. What kind of monster is this? What are they driven by? How do you kill them? What is the world affected by? And if you are telling a love story, if you are telling a story where vampires and humans have a relationship, be very conscious of what came before. Respect it, work around it, don't just tell the same story over again because however good your story is it will just get compared and it probably won't live up to the thing that started that trend in the first place and you don't want to have a disappointed audience do something new but vampires can absolutely be new vampires can still be exciting and still make a great story i love a vampire story but you do have to be conscious of what you're doing so thank you very much for watching this episode. I do hope you can hear it um, and I hope that this answered your question. If you go to thetableread.co.uk, over there you'll find links to all of the articles that are going out. There's writing advice, there's interviews, there's poetry, there's just so much stuff over there that should, if you love story and you love writing, you should find something that helps. If you comment on here, tell me about your favourite vampire story. Are you writing about vampires? How are you doing it in a new way? And what law have you put into your world that makes the vampires go, like work? Uh, what else? Um, did I say subscribe? Yeah, please do subscribe to this channel. I'm putting out videos every week designed to help and inspire and encourage you with your writing. And I do like, if you get some of your question, I'm completely happy to try and talk through any questions you send me if I have the answer. Thank you very much and I'll be back again soon. Bye.